Hi guys! Welcome to my very first podcast episode of which I have not yet named. Um, okay, let's get comfortable. Do you see my feet? Hopefully you can't. Um, ooh, but you can see my nipple. Why don't I just sit normal, huh? So, um, yeah. While this is my gonna be my very first episode, this is not the first time I've tried. I've tried, like, twice in the past. It's just I could not, like, speak and get my thoughts together. I kind of wrote down what I want to say and, like, some points that I um, want to get to. So hopefully this will run a little smooth. If it doesn't, scratch this. Um, we're not posting this. Uh, we're gonna work on it and then also work with me as I like try and get the set together I'm not loving this setup right now but I just want to try and see it's it's too dull I think I think this wall should be painted like pink or like a like a charmeuse I don't know if you're watching this you you see how kind of dull it is in here so I would want to brighten it up. And my room is a little brighter. It's like a um, sage green and, and a white. So I could try that too. I might try that in, in a different episode. But anyways, this is supposed to be mostly um, audio more than visual. So if you're watching me right now, don't do that. Go and do something while you listen to this okay um so yeah how should i start i think i'm just gonna start by just saying stuff that i'm into right now so for one what really made me want to start the podcast is i love listening to olivia neal um she's this she's from ireland um, so she's this I Irish influencer who lives in England, and her podcasts are, like, kind of unhinged, not gonna lie, but they're so funny. They're so funny, and, like, at, at, like, the more beginning parts, she gets really personal, and when I mean more beginning parts, I mean, like, the beginning, like, when she first started. She's on, like, episode 80 now, but when she first started, she would, like, talk about the most personal things like uh, i can't i can't remember but oh my god there was something she said if i remember it maybe i'll um voice over this but it was just something she said that was just so unhinged and so out of pocket that it just ha it just makes you laugh you know so i've been listening to her a lot and then also i love me some tres leches cake oh oh my god that stuff is so good it wasn't really the first time i tried it but the first time i tried it and i liked it was on my birthday of uh this year and ever since then i've been absolutely hooked i love how it's just wet like it's a wet cake and it's just so sweet and oh the first time I tried it, I didn't even like it. Like, I, I don't know. I thought it was too wet. Like, I don't know. Maybe that one wasn't as sweet as the one that I've been getting. So, okay, first, I don't like to share, like, where I live. But I think it is pretty obvious, but I would never say it out loud. But I will say the, say the state just because, I don't know, it, it'll be super obvious at this point. But I am from Texas. And, um... The cake is, like, I get it from H-E-B, and it's so good. It is, oh my god, it's so good. But, anyways, that is not what I want to talk about today. Today's podcast is titled, I Hate It Here and I Want to Go Home. And why did I pick that, you, you might ask. What, what do you mean you want to go home? Aren't you home right now? Or, you know, what, what is it, what is it you mean? And what I mean by that is, oh my gosh, I, okay, I kind of hate saying it because I sound like kind of snarky or like braggy about it, 
but I did study abroad in Italy um, my first semester of college. How it happened was the school that I go to now, it, um, I actually got waitlisted from the school and they said, they sent me an email saying, if you do this program, then you can come back in the spring as a transfer student. So the program was called Verto Education and the program offered a lot of different locations that you could have went to. Um, some off the top of my head were Spain, Italy, England, um, Hawaii, Australia, but and then they took that off because of COVID. Um, and I think Fiji too, and then they took that off as well. But nonetheless, um, I decided to do Italy, which was the best decision I've ever made. Although it didn't quite go as you would expect. So yeah, I obviously said yes and packed my bags to go to Florence, Italy, where I met up with some other students that were also most mostly freshman students, like their first year of college freshman students. And then some other people like, and all, by the way, first year, first year students, but from like different schools in America, if that makes sense, or like different, they're from different places, you know? So yeah, um, I met with them, you know, um, I, I kind of came a little late because I was in a little beauty pageant for the first time and you know, that was fun and all, but I was ready to go to Italy. So when I got there, like I said, I arrived late. So I didn't like make a secure friend group like in the time that they did because they got there maybe a week earlier than me. So they were kind of settling down, making friends. And I was kind of, I don't know, like I... I did make a like a good a group of girls. It was the four of us. Um, it's just I didn't really like all of them too much. It was just this one girl that I don't know. She kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I feel like she's a lot of a like very much a gossip, and I I just I didn't want that. Like I didn't want to be associated with that. But the other two girls were nice and I wish that, you know, we could have hung out more. But all that to say, I didn't really like have too many friends being there. And I hate that I was in my American bubble the whole time that I completely forgot you could literally go out and make Italian friends. Like you don't have to you don't have to stick to american friends you can go and make italian friends that's you're in italy you know and i even i met my downstairs neighbor who turned out to be super sweet um a little bit older than me but i you know i could have been going with her you know i didn't i sh like that's one thing like if you can take from this video is if you travel somewhere get out of your american bubble oh it was so frustrating like the the last uh it was, I, I don't know if I said this, it was the last, the like third to last day I was going to be there. I met my downstairs neighbor. So I was, I was like, damn, you know, I should have already gotten out of this American bubble, but sorry. I also forgot to mention it was a one semester long. So just about three months, which is not enough time, honestly, to make a long lasting relationship, but enough time to make some friends, you know, so I could have made some Italian friends. Um, but I did meet a lady um, over in Italy that's really nice and she was kind of like a mother figure over there to me. So I don't know, like, I don't know. I, I thought of her as like my Italian mom. Um, she's actually American and she had been living in Italy for a couple of years with her Italian husband. And she lives in Pisa, but how I met her was so, I was looking for kind of, I was looking for women like me um, because I, I, you know, needed to find some hair products for my coily hair, you know, like a beauty supply store or something. So me and my friend were walking and we see these two ladies 
um, sitting like in an outdoor cafe and I come up to them and I'm like, hey, you know, I just moved here. Uh, I'll be here for a couple of uh, months. And I was just wondering if you guys knew a like hair store or like, you know, where to get your natural hair products. Um, thankfully, they were American, so they understood me perfectly. And um, they told me that they were just tourists but they knew a lady that lived in Italy and had been living there for a while. So that's when they gave me her number and I was able to contact her. And then um, maybe, maybe a couple weeks later, um, she comes down to Florence because she also has an Airbnb that she runs in Florence as well. So she came to, down to Florence and we just, you know, we hit it off. And, you know, she's, she's now my my Italian mom, very sweet. I still keep in, in contact with her today. Like I do not want to lose contact, you know, I, I, oh, she really gave me the best memories. Like I could cry right now. But anyway, that was like September, I want to say. And then come around October is when I met these other girls that were studying in Italy, but with a different program. And they were American as well from all, all over the country, like uh, the US, Chicago, um, some other places too, I did, you know. And they were a little bit older than me. At the time I was uh, 18. And then the oldest of the group, cause it was more like a group of them, was like, I wanna say 25. So, yeah, I just, I felt like a little sister to them, and they felt like my big sisters, you know? And, um, yeah, we would just go and have fun, you know, occasionally. I, I don't always want to put myself into other people's plans, you know? Um, I, I would just, you know, be like, hey, you know, if you're doing anything... No, 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 I wouldn't say that. I would say hey what you doing you want to do something and then maybe they'd be like oh we have plans you want to join you know what i'm saying i'm saying so that's what would happen i wouldn't hang out with them too much though but when i did it was really fun i i just i just want to point out most these memories that i'm pointing out came so sporadically and i was really like i felt this is the very first time like I felt super like alone because everyone else had groups and they would like go travel and stuff. Like the group that I kind of left, they went to Paris, you know, and I kind of missed out on that. And I, I kind of beat myself up because I was like, I should have just stuck with them, you know, whatever. It would be three months. You can put up with her. Um... But yeah, you know, I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get to travel as much as I really wanted to. But I don't know, I just keep telling myself that it's always there. I'll always get the chance, hopefully, again. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm still trying to find my way back there. But anyways, where did I leave off? Um, yeah. Oh, even one time with these girls, I, I, don't, I don't think they know like how much they made my trip to Italy. I don't know if you can hear me crying right now, but I'm about to start crying. Like, I don't, I don't think some people know, like, how much you impact them. Because just the little things that they did, like, really, like, really made my trip, you know? Because I felt super alone the whole time. And it, w it was just this one time. Um, I remember they made everyone like a little cocktail drink, like in a plastic cup, and they would put little nicknames for everyone, and they put on mine, because they knew that I did, um, that I was in a pageant, they put Miss Texas on mine, and I was like, oh my god, like, I don't know, it, it may, it may seem so small, and like, yeah, whatever, but to me, like, I don't know, they, they remember something about me, you know? Like, they remember I'm from Texas, that I did a pageant, so they put Miss Texas on my cup, and then everyone else had, like, a, another little nickname that they were called, you know? So, yeah, I thought that was really sweet. And, um, yeah, 
So we, we went out a few times before we left. And then come November, my, my, this, oh my God, I'm going to start crying actually. This is my absolute most fav- favorite memory from there. Um, it was around Thanksgiving. Now, obviously, Thanksgiving is an American thing. And um, the only reason that we celebrated Thanksgiving was because, you know, the program was American. But also, the lady that I met is also American. So she kind of brought that kind of culture to her um, little circle. So um, instead of doing whatever the the um, program was doing for Thanksgiving, I took a train to Pisa and went to stay with her for the night and yeah have thanksgiving um this was actually my second time going to go see her um the first time i want to say i went around early october i want to say um and yeah i met some of her friends and like and most of them like are italian and they don't know english at all and I love language, so I, I don't know. I, I love just hearing them talk. And even though I don't know exactly what they're saying, um, and also the program didn't, didn't offer any like Italian classes, which was stupid because we're in Italy. Anyways, um, yeah, you know, I, I got to just immerse myself in the language as they just spoke around me. Yeah, so that was my second time going. Um, I caught a train and arrived and I saw them, but they weren't only picking me up. They also picked up um, another friend and his son that were around my age. And that was exactly my age, actually. I don't know why I said around. He was he was 18, just like me. But yeah, so we get there and it's I feel like it's even better because I have someone there my age that I can talk to, you know, so it was super fun. He spoke, he spoke good English. So, uh, you know, we were able to communicate with each other because I, while I try to learn Italian, it's, su- it's, uh, it's so difficult for me to just sit myself down and like tell myself to do this each day. You know what I mean? Like I could have like spent an hour memorizing 20 flashcards, but I didn't. I wish I did, but I didn't. I also could have maybe tried to find some Italian lessons and paid for that, but don't blame me. (laughs) Anyways, um, so yeah, we had a little Thanksgiving dinner and how the Italians do it is they, they have a plate for each food. Like for example, we would put like our spaghetti and breadsticks on the same plate. Whereas, and also Italians don't eat spaghetti and meatballs, by the way. It's just an example. I'm not saying, I'm not saying spaghetti and breadsticks because they do it. I'm just saying spaghetti because that's just the first thing that came. Okay, whatever. Oh, also, did you know spaghetti, a a singular spaghetti is spaghetto? So yeah, so if they were gonna eat spaghetti, They would eat the spaghetti and then put the bread on a separate plate and then put the meatballs on a separate plate if they ate meatballs. But yeah, so that's what happened. Um, But first, they drank so much wine during dinner. Like um, her husband was showing each bottle like every like, I want to say five minutes or after everyone was done with their drink. So I would, I would drink it, taste good, you know, whatever. And then he'd bring out another one. This is blah, 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 blah. And then pour it for everyone, you know. And then it, it got like, I don't know. It's a mix of it getting late and then me drinking so much wine that I was just kind of, kind of out of it. But I did not want, I did not want the night to end. Also, there was one time where her husband said, it was something like the chimney is ready and then everyone or well not everyone but the english speakers were like what do you mean turkey Uh, okay it it was funny in the moment 
yeah that was that was really cute but um and then also while we were at dinner me and the guy that was my age we sat at the like right next to each other at the table so whenever like they would speak and have a conversation he'd be like oh they said this this is what they're saying you know i was like oh my gosh like i feel so included you know like i ah it was such a good night afterwards you know when the night inevitably ended they had rented a hotel for me so they took me back to the hotel and you know that was the end and i was really sad that it ended because that that was one of my most favorite memories of being there um i should tell her that honestly i i don't think that like she knows knows that like what that night meant to me you know <sighs> okay come on alexis but yeah um and then i went home and was sad again in florence sad in florence another thing that i did that i wish i didn't do was i was on the phone a lot with my boyfriend back in america because we were doing long distance for the semester and i just and i i can't i cannot blame him it was not his fault that i decided to sit in bed and facetime him i think it was a mix of being homesick and then also just being in a foreign place that i just I don't know, like I didn't want to move, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely should have explored more. And if I was bored, I should have just walked. Just walk and see where I end up, you know? But yeah, some cities that I visited were Milan. I went there twice. I went to Pisa twice. Bologna. 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 San Start, starts with a B. Ooh, I can't remember. We went some places with the program, um, but like Milan and Pisa, I went there on my own. Well, we went there with the program, but and then I also went there on my own to see um, my my Italian mom. I told you that I met my downstairs neighbor in December, my one of the last days that I was there, and I, I regret that so much. Like I, when I got there, I should have knocked on my neighbor's door and been like, "Hi, I meet your neighbor," you know, just be friendly, be open. That's 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 a good tip. When you go somewhere new, be friendly and open, cause you want to make friends around your area, you know, and. Ah, it's just I wish I had the mind that I have now and go back and have a better experience. Because while I do have these beautiful memories that I would literally cherish for the rest of my life, most of my days were spent like sad and alone. <laughs> um, but also like not always sad. Alone, but not sad, you know? Because sometimes I was like, okay, I'm going to go to a restaurant and eat by myself. I'm going to go here, eat by myself, read a book, you know, whatever. At the time, I was reading Crying in H Mart at the time, um, which I didn't finish because I didn't really like it. Sorry. I don't think, I don't like, like, memoirs. I, I like a good fiction book. But yeah, that's just me. Yeah, and then I, I at the end, oh my god, it gets so cold. It gets so freaking cold. There was a lot of nights where my friends were going out. They're like, come on, let's go. And I was like, wait, you guys are wearing short shirts. You guys are wearing short. Fuck. You guys are wearing short dresses and spaghetti straps. And it's 10 degrees outside. Oh, my God. The colds get cold. And saying that, and I'm from Texas. It does get cold in Texas, but I think, I don't know, I think we were like in a heat wave or something because I was bundled up in a bunch of layers at the airport of Florence and then I come back to, I almost said where I'm from, I come back to Texas and I'm so hot, 
I have to rip everything off because it's just so hot in here. And I know you're like, oh, you know, it's it's hot in Texas, yeah. But it does get cold here, okay? It does get cold. Okay, we had a freeze not too long ago. Twice, like, back-to-back years. So, it gets cold. Okay? When the time came to leave, I was ready to leave. Um, it's just, it was very different. Like, like everyday life like I had to walk everywhere I actually didn't like that when I when I was there um and then also like it was my first time cooking for myself so I wasn't really cooking the best meals and the only good meals I had was when I went out and I didn't want to go out all the time and spend money because my dad would get mad so yeah a lot of bad food that I had and that was on me that was really on me now if I went I would be fine because I I've lived by myself for a while so I know how to cook for myself I know how to grocery shop for myself I know what I need you know it was just a mix of that and I just missed driving you know but now that I'm back here and it's been two years since um since being at home I um hate driving everything is so far you know i think about it and i'm like i literally have to take a highway to get to the grocery store you know like when i was in italy i just walked to the grocery store and it was right there and i grabbed what i wanted and i left back to my apartment 10 minutes max to get there the gym walk to the gym work out walk back home you know And now I have to drive 10 minutes to the gym. Whereas when I was in Italy, my true home, I walked five minutes to the gym, you know? So just, yeah, now I hate driving. (laughs) And I I truly hate driving with a passion and I want to go home. Yeah, so the highways, terrible, ugly. Another thing I hate is how ugly it looks here. Everything is pavemented and... And is, there's just no architectural design where I live. And then also where I live, it's super flat. So there's not like beautiful mountain ranges. Like maybe you would see like at a Target in Colorado, you know. It's just so bleak and dry. And as a creative person myself, like I know you should find creativity and whatever, wherever you are. But here it's just so bleak and especially because i've lived here my whole life and i just it's just it's it's so okay what else do i hate about living here so everything's far it's ugly it's not super easy to exercise here in italy you know Wherever you go, you use your legs. Here, you jump in a car. You don't, you don't have to intentionally work out to stay in shape in Italy. Okay, that's kind of a stretch. Not in shape in shape, but like in a good balance of getting the right steps a day, you know? Like there's no need to count, count your steps every day. Um... Although I don't do that, but I'm just saying, like, if you were the type to, like, be like, oh, I have to reach 2,000 steps today, like, that's not a problem in Italy. Or, like, any place that's, like, a walking city. Um, That could be New York. I don't know anywhere else in the U.S. Chicago. That northeast, you know. But definitely in Europe, you know, you can just get up and walk. Oh, also, I absolutely love language um i know spanish i don't know it super well um i i know a lot of vocab words i know how to use the verbs whatever whatever but i'm very slow and sometimes i don't understand native speakers like their accent is just so strong that i just i can't understand so I would love to go to like Spain, Colombia, 
Mexico. Uh, another Hispano Hablante país, you know? Um, so, because I just, I can't learn here. I feel like I'd be a burden to ask someone who speaks English and Spanish if I can practice on them, you know? Because I'd just be so slow and yada yada. Whereas if I just like speak to someone who only knows Spanish, like they couldn't try to like help me in English. Like they would help me in Spanish and I would have to understand that Spanish for them to help me. You know what I'm you know what I'm getting at? I just I just I want full immersion in language. And when I was in Italy, I absolutely loved just hearing Italian all day. Um, like if I go out to the streets and just, you know, hear pedestrians, you know, speaking Italian. There was one time um, my friend and I were trying to get somewhere and we didn't understand the train system. And I asked this little old Italian lady, like, how to do it in Italian. I did that in Italian. And I don't, I can't even remember any Italian words now, except for spaghetti. Yes, I do. That's a lie. But my, my point is... When I was immersed in Italian, I knew a lot of Italian. Does that make sense? Yeah, because, I don't know, you just pick it up and it just stays with you because it's something that you need. Whereas here, I don't need any Italian because no one here speaks Italian. So it's just, it kind of just deletes out of my head, you know? I feel like that's something that could be avoided if I stayed in the country longer and really immerse myself in their language by buying Italian books, which I did. I bought a children's book, uh, but I never read it. And I still have it. I don't know why I didn't donate that. I should have donated that because no one's gonna use it here. Anyways, but yeah, Italian books, go find Italian friends, make yourself study flashcards and you know, learn some Ita- some vocab words, you know? Yeah, so that's my home. I'm, I'm hoping that I could hopefully make my way back over there um, someday. I just, I'm not really sure when. I've, I've like been trying to find like internships over there. I've been looking at schools. I've not applied to them, but I've looked at them, which doesn't do anything right, I know. I really want to. But also, like, I, I've i seen, like, an opportunity. There's this, like, fashion program that's only a year long in Italy, and I was thinking about that. And then I saw that it started in September, like, this coming September. And then I thought, well, that's too close, you know, like I need some time in between. And I think that's just me settling. Like I'm like because I've been here, you know, for two years after being home, I'm now starting to settle like, you know, it's easy just understanding people because I speak English. So it's easy just to stay and speak English. It's easy to just stay and hop in a car when I want to go somewhere. It's easy to stay and, you know, what my mom makes me food, you know. But I hate that. <laughs> like, I, I want to push myself out of my comfort zone. I want to be, I want to be uncomfortable um, and go. Not uncomfortable in a bad way, obviously, but uncomfortable as in like this is not something i normally do let's do it and then for my last like little bit that i have left is where do i picture myself living um like living living for like long term you know so it would be easy here because i have friends and family but I don't want to stay in America. I want, because like I said, I love language. So I would want to go somewhere like maybe Italy again. I really loved Italy. Uh, Maybe I could try somewhere else. But 
I don't know. I'm thinking like long term live. I obviously I haven't been I haven't been to a lot of places. I've been in Texas my whole life, um, and then I went Italy once, you know, for a semester. Um, I've been to Nigeria for two weeks because I'm Nigerian. Um, I'm not living there. <laughs> so yeah, this is all just like romanticized romanticization in my head so bear keep that in mind i would love maybe like on the spanish coast you know like barcelona when the pandemic hit i was thinking like i really like want to surf like that's just been something that i've been thinking about so much and i tried to like apply to schools like on the coast so that i can maybe learn that you know um, unfortunately that didn't happen but I don't know but yeah maybe like Barcelona on the coast you know I will walk to the coffee shop and I'll sit and edit my little videos and take pictures and talk with my Spanish friends you know um, I just when I'm older I want to make sure that I am immersed in some type of language because I will be bilingual. By by the time I leave this earth, I will have known at least three languages. Um, and there's no like that that's happening. That's that's going to happen. So I would really love to like live somewhere that doesn't speak English so that I can fully immerse myself, you know? But yeah, I guess that's really it. I I don't know, I don't have too much else to say. Thank you for listening, watching, whatever you did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I did pick a winner for the giveaway and we are currently in talks about um, the video, so stay tuned for that. And another sewing video is coming. Just please wait, guys. I've I've really been going through it mentally. This, this past couple of weeks have not been the best few weeks for me mentally. Like, although, like, you know, there has been opportunity for me, it was just my mental state is not super good. But I think I'm back, so I'm ready. <laughs> but yeah, um, leave some comments down below. I want to do how Olivia does in her podcast and, like, towards the end, just kind of answer questions that you guys have. And then, like, I can expand on that. So I can kind of make the podcast episodes a little bit longer because I like a nice long episode, like a nice long podcast episode because I like to listen to them like if I'm sewing or driving or anything like that. So I don't know. That's what I want. So that's, that's what I like. So that's what I want to give to you guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another sewing video, vlog, podcast episode. I'm tr I... I really would like to do three videos a week, which is, you know, the sewing, podcast, and um, vlog, because I really want to try and grow this summer, and hopefully this could be my stream of income when I go back to school for the fall. But yeah, um, what else? What else? Leave your questions down below, as many questions as you have, please. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye! Yeah.